Hello, and welcome to the ABCs of the NFA, the National Firearms Act of 1934. As some of you may know, the National Firearms Act of 1934 was one of the first federal gun control laws that was passed in this country, and it remains important today. This class will be a good introduction if you're an attorney new to firearms law, or simply if you're anyone who wants to get a better understanding of gun laws in this country today and to understand better some of what is being de debated on the state and federal level. My name is Sarah Javasi. I've been Assistant General Counsel at the National Rifle Association for over 16 years now, and I hope you enjoy the program. To start off, under federal law, there are generally two classifications of firearms. The first category are those firearms that are regulated by the Gun Control Act of 1968, commonly known as Title I firearms. The second category are those firearms that are regulated by both the Gun Control Act of 1968 and the National Firearms Act of 1934, those firearms are known interchangeably as Title II or Class III or NFA firearms. Keep in mind that all firearms in the United States are regulated under both federal and state law, and in some cases local law as well. Let's look at that first category the Title I firearms. These are by far the most commonly purchased and transferred guns in the United States. They are the most common. These are your garden variety types of semi-automatic handguns, revolvers, pump and semi-automatic shotguns, semi-automatic rifles like the AR-15. These guns make up uh, well over 95% of the firearm stock in this country. The vast majority of gun owners in this country own only Title I firearms, and they may never even have the opportunity to hold or to shoot a Title II NFA firearm that we're gonna talk about. Now, under federal law, the buyer of a Title I generic everyday type of firearm who purchases that gun from a federal firearms licensee, otherwise known as an FFL, must undergo a criminal background check. And for Title I firearms, those checks generally go through the FBI, through the FBI NICS program. That's true as well in states that have what are known as universal background checks that cover even private sales between two unlicensed individuals where there's no federal firearms licensee involved. Those background checks generally go through the FBI, although there are some, some different systems out there. Title II, those NFA firearms, that second category is very different. These NFA firearms require approval of the ATF before they can be transferred or made. They require registration of those firearms with ATF. In most cases, a tax must be paid before those guns are transferred or manufactured. They require notification to the chief law enforcement officer where the buyer or the transferee resides. They can be possessed generally only by the registered owner and they are lawful to possess under federal law. Remember, the National Firearms Act is a federal law, but some states either further regulate them or prohibit them under their own state laws. Keep that in mind. 